I'm Princess Sarah Culberson, and this is Dream in Black. When I think of Dream in Black, I think of kids of color dreaming of their wildest dreams, thinking about their heroes, their sheroes. To me, it means standing up, standing up for yourself, standing up for others, thinking about the world as a whole, not just my own microcosm or my life, but our lives because we're all connected, no matter where you live in the world, everything impacts all of us. So when I think of somebody like that, there's somebody who stands for everyone. I'm Princess Sarah Culberson, and this is Dream in Black. Fantastic, welcome back to Digital Trends Live. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler, very excited to have with us right now, Princess Sarah Culberson, hello. Good to see you. Hi, yeah, thanks for joining us. I, there's so much I wanna talk about with what you're doing and with your projects, um, and I wanna find out a little bit more about your personal story, but maybe to start off with, for everybody who's watching, we can walk through just what Sierra Leone Rising is and, and what exactly it does. Yes, Sierra Leone Rising is a nonprofit, and we do work in public health, education, and female empowerment. So we're really working on a lot of different projects that support the community, which is where my family's from. I was going to say that's a that's a lot of uh, a lot of different angles there that you're working on at the same time. Um, yes. Let's talk about uh, uh, Sierra Leone and just your personal journey on finding out your connection because it's yes. just a fascinating story. And for anybody who doesn't know about it, and maybe uh, how you found out you're a princess and and everything that goes along with that. Yeah. So a few years ago, I'm adopted. I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia. I was adopted into an all white family, and I wanted to know more about my biological roots, who I look like, medical history, all those things. And so I did this amazing class called Landmark Worldwide, and I realized I really wanted to find my birth family. And in the course, I went on this journey, found this amazing private investigator who helped me find my birth father. And um, we, I went to Sierra Leone, met my father, met the whole tribe. My father gave me this beautiful green African dress. And when I got to the village, all the women came forward, hundreds of people singing and dancing, and all the women were wearing the same green dress that I had been given, and they were singing, we're preparing for Sarah and Mende. They were singing, a tang, 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 but a tang, 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 paranu, anu, hey, pura, Sarah, go to. It was really amazing, overwhelming. I was going to say, that that almost seems like it would be so overwhelming at the same time. Like, what was going through your mind when you see the no, sea of people singing to you? Out. I was literally pinching myself. Like, is, is this really <laughs> happening? I can't believe this is really happening. It was overwhelming. It was wonderful. And um, I, my family runs a chiefdom of 44,000. And uh, my uncle meets with the president of the country. We have a huge responsibility in this country. Um and I learned all of this for the first time. And I thought, well, what does this mean? Do I have to be perfect all the time? I'm a princess. Am I supposed to wear dresses? Like, right. what is this? <laughs> and I really learned about what it means is responsibility and, and to the community and to the country as a whole. So that's what we've been working on. That's that's amazing. Going from, you know, Virginia to it was was it, uh, Virginia, West, West Virginia, yeah. excuse me, Morgantown, West Virginia. Yeah. To, to Sierra Leone. I mean, that's just an incredible story in its own right. But now you've taken this mantle to try to help out, uh, help out the country and help out people with your project. And so let's let's walk through some of those more specific things. Um, you know, since we are a technology show, like how right. how maybe we can talk about a little bit how technology is helping out in some of the projects that you're working on. Well, first of all, to talk about technology, just to be able to communicate, because when I went there in 2004, nobody had cell phones in Sierra Leone. So just, I was, I was, I mean, believe it or not, I had yeah. pre phone cards and that's how we were communicating back and forth and back and forth was that way. Wow. Um, right. It's like, wow. <laughs> and then when WhatsApp happened, then we started using WhatsApp and then they started getting technology and getting some internet, some internet Wi-Fi signals within Sierra Leone. So we started to be able to use WhatsApp and starting to do email. And then we started using Skype and doing classroom conversations with kids um, and having students learn how to code, um, having students learn how to just, well, really connect with other students in the United States and Canada and in Colombia and having conversations, cultural understandings about what's happening globally. Um, with Oakwood students in North Hollywood, we uh, read the book Persepolis with the Bumpe High School girls and talked about that whole conversation. We also discussed Ebola. It wasn't just a, a media story. It was actually having a real life conversation with people on the ground. So technology has been how this is all 
how, how all this has really happened. I mean, you could have done it without the technology. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to what you were saying, too, just that everything is connected. We're all connected in some way, shape or form. Whatever you do is going to affect somebody else. But being able to have that that communication aspect, that's something that, you know, you know, they there were no cell phones that, you know, in 2004 to where now uh, people are learning how to code and communicating with somebody in L.A., learning about their experience versus, you know, at somebody in L.A. is learning about the experience in Sierra Leone. I mean, it's got to be such a neat thing just to see all of that happen. It's been completely incredible. And to be able to actually check in with the team on the ground, because my brother, Hindo Bay Pessoa, runs the team on the ground with my father, um, Joseph Pessoa. So they're running things there. So now we have constant communication with WhatsApp. Like, this is what's happening. Let's do a phone call. Whereas before, it was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? Or they'd have to go stand on a hill to get signal <laughs> yeah. to even get a phone call with the calling cards. So it was really a lot. Uh, what are some of the, um, you know, now that, that the, you've increased the technology, the, the technology has increased the communication a little bit more, but what are some of the still hurdles and roadblocks that you're dealing with when it comes to that? Um, well, we, World Vision was, is a non, an NGO, an international NGO, and they are actually based in Boompe, and they just moved to a new area. So we actually used their internet. We partnered with them. So now that they're not there, having internet access is quite a challenge. It's not as easy to get it into the areas. So that's a huge thing that we need is having internet access. Um, are there any projects that you're working with to maybe increase that or anything that you've seen that you think would be a, a good idea to help uh, increase the access? Yeah, we're actually talking um, to, we're, well, we're actually having a couple conversations to see if World Vision can help with that to help mm -hmm. keep it going so we can actually have it in their old building that they're using. So that's one of the ideas. Um, I'd love to get Intel involved. They might be able to help with something like that or even computers. Um, and we've also another thing around electricity, right, to even power the internet is we've had GLI, Girls Learner International, which is a club here at the Oakwood School where I work with students. Um, and GLI International in Northern California, they've actually bought solar panels that have helped just to charge the computers and do all of that because the basic electricity is not found in a lot of areas. Some places have electricity, but they use a generator. Um, so we're really trying to get solar. So that's definitely something that, that you know, if, if you're watching right now and you're part of a company that could help out with any of those projects, you know, definitely get a hold of, uh, of Sarah to talk about that. And we'll, we'll come back to that too, because I want to know how people can get more involved with everything that's going on with what you're doing. Um, um, with the, this right now, let me ask you this. I mean, has this become basically your full-time job? Is this what you do all the time? Like, how do you keep inspired to keep working on this? Um, this is not my full-time job. It's <laughs> one of the things I do. I work with amazing students at the Oakwood School. I've actually taken them to, to Sierra Leone to do projects um, with the students there. Um, I also, I, I co-wrote a book with my writing partner, Tracy Trivis. And so I've also done speaking engagements in different places. So I still travel and do that from time to time. And um, yeah, so those are the things I do. And the foundation takes a lot of time as well, but it's fun. And it's when, when I see kids connect with kids in another part of the world and they're having conversations and laughing and then they're talking about, oh, do you know Justin Bieber? They're like, oh, I love Justin Bieber. It's like, wait, what's happening? So it's just really special to have those technology and global conversations, but also the fun conversations about music and culture and, and so on, which is so special. So that really inspires me. And we also have a, a wonderful board team, board members. None of this has happened by just me. It's been a community really coming together to make this happen. Well, it's really incredible what you're doing. And I want to say, you know, to get back to that one question of how can people get involved, where would you suggest people go to learn more about Sierra Leone Rising or help out or just, just educate themselves on what it is that you're doing? They can go to our website, sierraleonerising.org, and get all of that information and um, learn about our different projects, see the different things we're working on. Um, they can also go to sarahcolperson.com message me, message the foundation, either way. But I really think SierraLeonRising.org is a great way to see everything that we're up to. Fantastic. Um, we would love people to get involved. It really takes a village and it takes a community to make things happen. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your story and sharing yeah. the story of Sierra Leone Rising here on Digital Trends Live. Really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for having me. Take uh, care. You too. All right, there we go. Another great story here on Digital Trends Live. How cool is that? So that is Princess Sarah Culberson, SierraLeoneRising.org. Go there and take a look at everything that they have going on. We've got more coming up. For